Well, I expect that you come to this class having some familiarity with HTML already, having built simple web pages, simple websites, and that the basics, the very root basics of HTML are pretty familiar to you. A lot of what I'm gonna to try to do in this course is build on those basics and have you examine things that you've sort of just taken for granted. We've um, already um, examined the idea of an A tag. An A tag is really a way of retrieving files. And so I want you to think more in a more sophisticated and subtle way about a lot of the things that you might have taken for granted. But still, there are a lot of things that I won't really talk about and I won't mention and I'll just hope that you've gone through and, and know enough about them that they are sort of second nature to you. And among those is the, uh, are the block tags that I figure you have used at some point or if you haven't used very well that you're capable of going out and finding out about them yourselves like P tags and ULs and LIs and HRs and how to create a table and headings and all those kinds of things. Those are, those are tags that should be pretty familiar to you and you should know how to use along with most of the key attributes like a style attribute or the class attribute of all of those tags and, um, and, and uh, how they nest and what they look like on the screen. So I'll take it for granted that you know enough about those tags to really use them and be pretty fluent with them and, and I won't have to go over them explicitly. Similarly with the inline tags, the strong tag or the EM tag, and, and I, have to, I have to put in a, a small rant here. So there is, once upon a time there was the I tag and I obviously stands for italics and there was the B tag and B obviously stands for bold and someone came along, and I wish I knew who it was because I would certainly give this rant to them. They came along and said, well, you know, that's a very, um, uh, that's, that's a very explicit tag. And it's really not about italic per se. It's about emphasis. And so we should rename that italic tag to emphasis because we want to be more semantic and much less about exactly how the formatting looks or exactly how the rendering looks. And of course, it's such a silly thing because HTML is all about look and feel and layout and rendering, and it's much more useful to be explicit than to hide the fact that that's really what you're about. So we had an I tag, it worked perfectly well. Someone came along and said it ought to be the EM tag. It ought to stand for emphasis because it's really about emphasis and emphasis could be anything. It doesn't have to be italics. But then what happens? Everybody uses the EM tag instead of the I tag and it always turns out to be italic. Right, so just name it italic if that's what you mean by it. Okay, end of that rant. Same thing, by the way, goes for the bold tag, which was turned into the strong tag. So at any rate, these are the basic inline tags, and there's not that many of them that you need to work with, but you do need to know them, and I will expect that you know how to use them without, um, without any explicit instruction. And it also includes the A tag, which is the one that's the most sophisticated. The one thing I will mention about the A tag that tends to hang people up is that it has two very different uses. One is the one that you're sure to know about, which is to create a link. And we know that creating a link really means specifying a next file to go to, a file to retrieve if that link is, is in, engaged. But there's another use of it that we'll, we'll see is equally important for us because um, we'll use it a lot. And it actually turns out to be the use that that tag was named after. And that's the anchor function of that tag. So A stands for anchor. A doesn't stand for link. A stands for anchor, and the anchor function of that tag is to simply mark a location on a page. I drop anchors at certain parts of the page in order to be able to go to those parts explicitly. So keep that in mind. I won't, I won't talk too much more about it right now, but it's going to come up over and over again as a way for us to navigate inside a page. Not between pages, but inside a page. And to mark the location where, the, where I want to navigate to inside of a page. Okay, so if that's unfamiliar to you, it might be worthwhile to look up the A tag right now, find out how it functions as an anchor and why we might call it an anchor so that when we come across it again, it's not new, it's not new information to you, but it's something that, um, that you've seen and worked with a lot before. Okay, then, um, the, oh, the, the two that I actually, I forgot to talk about the div and, and uh, because I'm on the span tag, the div tag and the span tag, um, you can think of div tags as being a blank block tag. It just says, this is a block. When I put a div and div stands for division, I'm saying this is division. I wish they called them rect, or actually rectangle, because that's actually what a div is. A div is just a rectangle. I want to put a rectangle on the screen. And in fact, a rectangle, as we've talked about before, is a block. I want to put a block on the screen and 
that's all I want to say about it right now. I don't want to say that it's a heading. I don't want to say that it's a paragraph. I don't want to say that it's a table. I just want to say it's some division. So those div tags have become very important because we use them to mark certain regions of the screen. So a div tag is a block tag, and you can think of it as sort of a blank block that just is, I'm going to be a block, and I'm not going to say anything else more about it right now. Of course, we put in style attributes or ID attributes or something else that allow us to really work with the nature of that div to change the way it's formatted, but the div tag itself simply says, I'm a block. Similarly, in the inline tags, we have the span tag. And the span tag simply says, I'm, I'm something that needs to be marked and I'm internal. I'm a span of text. That's why they use the word span. Division of the page, span of text. And I wrap that span tag around some piece of text in order to say, mark this piece of text. I might mark it with an identifier. I might mark it with a class attribute that, that allows me to link it to a style sheet. Lots of different things I could do with the span, but the span is also a blank. It's a blank inline tag the same way that a div is a blank um, block tag. So that's the way we use spans and divs. They're very useful for um, marking off um, areas of text. They're also very useful for um, creating the layout uh, or the, yeah, the layout of a page. And you can also use them for styling and, and, and modifying the look of a page. Okay, um, I'll also be um, expecting that you're familiar with the image tag and its source attribute, which, which points to the file. We'll talk a little bit later about, um, about images, and I'll go more in detail about that image tag, but really mostly about how to locate files using that image tag. And so you should be familiar with the image tag and the height and the width and the border elements and the usual you know, small set of attributes that help you define title and alt that help you define. Actually, a comment about title and alt um, that um, has sort of tripped me up and, and, and bugs me a little bit. Um, there's really sort of an ambiguity about the difference between title and alt. Specifically, title is, is, is supposed to be used in order to designate the, um, uh, the accessibility options of an image. So if the image isn't displayed because, either because um, there's a, a visually impaired person viewing the web page or something goes wrong and you can't, find the, the, you can't find the file, then the title should be the thing that stands in for it. Well, there's a little bit of a conflict because the alt attribute also does those things. What I, what I tend to do, I think title is the one that most people focus on right now, so I would expect that all of your images have titles. But sometimes I just go ahead and put the exactly the same thing in a title attribute and an alt attribute just to cover all my bases. And you'll see, because we use XML, it's no big deal. It's not like I'm going to get those things out of sync. I just copy the same thing from my XML into the alt um, attribute from my XML into the title attribute and every browser under every circumstance is going to be happy with that. Okay, that's images. We'll talk a little bit more about images later. Um, I want to talk about, uh, and we'll also talk about page structure tags later, so I won't, I won't talk too much about that right now because there's lots more to be said about that in, uh, in a future topic, but I have listed on this page all the ones that you should be familiar with so you can come back to this page and, and know the HTML tags that you're responsible for. Finally, let's talk a little bit about um, CSS. Um, you won't really be doing CSS in this class. You won't be like going into a CSS style sheet and modifying things unless you particularly want to. Sometimes our, the files that we use will be linked to CSS. So I expect you to know the way that CSS interacts with a web page, but not to know necessarily CSS itself. CSS has its own syntax and all sorts of things to learn, and it's one of my least favorite things in HTML land because it's, it's just a pain, and it takes a really long time to get things right, and there's lots of ambiguities in it, and there's lots of overlapping things, and it's a, it's a classic example of a muddled and, um, and kind of spiderweb-like syntax that is really difficult to uncode because there's so many interactions between the different elements of it. So that's why I don't like it, but, it's, but it is, it is a, um, a huge part of, of doing web design and something that you're going to have to come to grips with one way or another. And in this class, what I really want you to know about CSS is how it interacts, and particularly where you get the CSS from that applies to a tag. So there are a few different places, a few different ways that can happen. Um, the way that I think is probably, in general, the best way to go about it is all of your CSS is in a separate file. That entire file is linked to the web page, so you don't have to worry about the CSS in the web page. 
Of course, if you do that, then there's, there's two files involved in a web page and not just one. And so there's a technique where you can literally include the CSS inside the web page. Um, and so that's done as well, so that you don't have to have a separate file. But I think it's much cleaner and it's, much, um, it's, it's, a better, uh, it's a better methodology to keep your CSS outside of the web files in separate pages and use, uh, and use a, a tag up in the header section, which we'll talk about later, that, that brings that file in and applies it to the, um, and, and link, makes the linkage between the CSS formatting code and the HTML, um, uh, and the HTML tags. Okay, that's issue number one. Issue number two is how do I apply a particular piece of CSS to a particular tag? So this is another instance where it's complicated and there's overlaps and you can do it two different ways and then you're never quite sure what's applying to the tag and you know sometimes it takes quite a long time to sort these things out and it's because there are a variety of ways of applying a CSS formatting instruction and that's the way to think about CSS is that it's a it's a set of formatting instructions it says make it bold make it italic make it 24 point make it aerial put a border around it put a black background in it put an image behind it you know all these different things that you can say with CSS they're all formatting instructions so how do I apply a set of formatting instructions to a tag there is a, a number of different ways first of all I can in my CSS um, style sheet my cascading style sheet I can redefine the entire tag. I can say, if you come across a P tag, don't make it Arial, make it Verdana, and don't make it the, whatever the default would be for the browser, make it 50 point, make it bold always. So I can literally redefine the meaning of a tag or the formatting of the, and the rendering of a tag based on the name of the tag. Or I can redefine how a tag is rendered by um, referencing its ID. If you come across an ID, a tag whose ID is X, Y, Z, then use this formatting. And literally the tag has an ID attribute. When I find that ID attribute, I apply this, these formatting commands. Or a very, a very commonly used technique, and the technique that I actually prefer the most is to use a class attribute. I say um, P class equals uh, body. And that what I've said is that uh, well, what, what CSS will say is if you come across a P tag, or actually if you come across any tag whose style is body, apply these formatting commands to that tag. Okay, so that's the third way to do it. Um, the fourth way to do it is to put something called a style attribute right in the tag. And the style attribute allows you to sort of short circuit the whole thing and type a CSS command directly into the tag. Okay, so we have four different ways of applying styling information to an HTML tag, and they all interact. And so, um, you know, in another class and another time, you can learn all about how they interact and why they interact and which ones take precedence and how you can untangle a mess and the best practices for creating CSS. Right here, I simply want you to realize that there is something called CSS and it's applied in many ways. You'll see CSS um, in various examples throughout the class, and you need to understand not how CSS works um, internally, what all the formatting commands are, but in a particular instance, how is it that CSS is being used in this particular instance? Is there a style um, attribute and so the CSS is being typed directly into the tag? You'll see pretty much all of these different methods in various examples, um, and I put different methods in different examples really for convenience. Sometimes it's just convenient to not have to go and define a bunch of CSS because I just want to create a div and I just want to put a border around the div and so I'm going to put a style attribute in there and type in that border command right in the style attribute of a div and forget about all the creating files and linking files and stuff like that. Other times I want to create a consistent look and feel and so I migrate everything out of the HTML file and into a CSS file and that gives me the ability to say, I've established a look and feel. That look and feel is inside the CSS file, and I simply apply the CSS file to any HTML file, and that's applied the look and feel to that file. Okay, so um, that's, the, that's a kind of a synopsis of the, of the HTML that you need to know. Um, we won't work with JavaScript. That's the, that's the remaining one that, that we could have had in here because there's not a whole lot of need for JavaScript in the class. There's a couple of examples of JavaScript but it's beyond what I expect you to really know or care about how that works. Mostly you just have to avoid messing up the JavaScript and you know, if, if a file is necessary, a JavaScript file is necessary somewhere to have that file in the right place.